Welcome, bienvenidos, and kwan basalam metachu to all of our wonderful listeners and watchers out there. We just watched UFC 235, and we have some thoughts. We're going to kind of go through the, the fights that stuck out to us on this card, and if we feel that we have any time, then we're going to continue to some of the many, many events that have been going on the past couple weeks. Seems like fresh into 2019. A lot of shit has been going down, and that's why we're here to give you our two cents. White Belt MMA, Rastin Karami, Henok Elias. Okay, I think it makes sense to start towards the bottom of the card. We could start at the top and go down, or bottom, or randomize. It. I mean, we, let's just do bottom, but I feel like you introed it so well, and I didn't add the Farsi in there. Throw it in, uh, baby. No, I think it's too late. Throw it in. <laughs> Throw it in. I think we should have. Samache um, Tori to our Farsi listeners out there. In our area, any farce you want to add? I think you covered it. Uh, how about we start with that bantamweight fight with Macy Chasson? I think she was the ultimate fighter winner. And my wife, you know, like my wife doesn't like MMA at all. And when she watched the ultimate fighter with me and got super into it. She was the big one, right? Really yeah, tall. this was the featherweight. And she, yeah. was, she fucking dropped down to bantamweight for, yeah. for this card. And I don't know if it's because she doesn't want to fight the bigger girls, but. Yeah, she don't want that cyborg smoke. Or <laughs> she don't want that Nunez smoke. She's huge though. Holy she's like five five eleven. You know nah, she's got. Right. She's... And with the PFL on ESPN as well, she might Holly get that Holmes Kayla. Also, yeah, that yeah. Kayla hair. Anyway, she was, champ. She was dominant. Got the finish, and that just shows that Fortis MMA. That's a huge camp coming up, man. They're really like. Where are they? I think it's Texas. Texas. Oh. You know what it is? Darren Williams. NBA reference. That's Shut the camp up. that he. Your coached. boy. Yes. In NBA 2K, which we call Naba. That's his character right there. He would say D Will would assert his will. So now he's asserting his will in MMA. Yeah, but for this MMA, I think he co owns it, but they're really coming up. They win all their fights, and it's a one to watch for sure. And then the other prelim fight that I was like kind of intrigued about. You mean was the pre prelim, right? Pre prelim. That's what it was, right? Yeah, the fight pass prelims, which yeah. they somehow still have going, even though there's ESPN prelims. Hey, okay. I'm not mad at it. We got an account on that. We got the <laughs> ESPN Plus account and the pay per view. we watching it all, baby. Yeah, all the expenses. Fight all fanatics out here. Um, the middleweight, well, the middleweight fight with Edmund uh, Shabazian, the Armenian guy from Glendale. Lo local, local, yeah, yeah, yeah. local. Um, we know a lot of cats in the Glendale area. <laughs> we know a lot of Armenians out there too. Their connections to Iranian and Ethiopian culture with Armenia, so uh, yeah, yeah. we got that connect. And uh, I think he was he's managed by Ronda Rousey. Yeah, because Ronda yep. tr Ronda trained out of Glendale. Yeah, and he was undefeated. He came in. To be honest, his record was a little sketchy. Like all the guys he's beaten had losing records. I think like his win, all of his wins were like against guys with sub five hundred records. So you know, you don't know how how good he was coming in. And his ultimate testing, bro. For sure, and he won his first fight, but it was a terrible fight in the UFC. Why? Fight. It was no, not this one. This was the second fight. Oh, his oh. First I was fight, like, what? That was the first fight. fight in the UFC. Was on the Ultimate Fighter finale, and he was like, it was like bad wrestling, bad striking. He looked terrible. Right? Okay. And everyone was like, okay, as soon as he gets a tough guy, he's gonna lose. Yeah. And then he got a moderately tough guy, another four to MMA guy, which I just talked about as a good yeah. camp. And this guy went in for a takedown, and he gave him the Travis at Brown elbows. Yo, it was quick. 30 seconds? Something like that. He gave him the Travis Brown elbows and finished him. Did I he actually pass out or did the ref stop it? No, because he, he kind of fell off the elbows yeah. and then it was, I think, some ground and pound to finish oh. off. Like, I think it was like a pretty straightforward yeah. finish. It was conclusive. I just don't remember if the ref grabbed him or not. No, no, I think it was, uh, I think it was after the fact. Uh, but that was interesting. I want to see him against tougher guys. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the future for him. Kind Agreed. of intrigued. And then the prelims were fantastic too. I don't know if you want to pick out any. Yeah, the ones on the ESPN. Yeah, yeah, the regular prelims. Um, are I'm mainly just focused on like Diego Sanchez versus Mickey Gall, and then Zabit versus Jeremy Stevens. What do you think on about Diego? Two. So which one, everyone? Yeah. What do you, I want to know your input on Diego and Mickey because you were talking about Mickey's jits Boy. prior to this fight. Yeah, I love his Gracie Jiu Jitsu. It's classic. Um, it's more oriented on position and control, not a lot of leg locks, but looking to basically choke the guy out. I think he's got five wins with two losses now, and I think all five have been rear naked strangle. So I'm impressed with the I love so that you obviously. refer to the Dana hair strangle rather than <laughs> choke. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, we're not going to get into the philology debate right now <laughs> with the nuances between a strangle or a choke, but yeah, I respect that man's wisdom in mixed martial arts. So without sidetracking too much on that getting back to the fight what i was thought and i do like the muay thai that he's training at the yard also a local fighter in downtown la 
But Diego that's, that's Sanchez, Schilling, right? Joe that's Schilling. right, yeah. right, of Bellator fame right now. And before that, he fought in Glory, I want to say. Probably, probably the best three and five fighter in the world, <laughs> I would say, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'd love to train with them, seriously, yeah. one day. But what I was thoroughly impressed by is the veteran Diego, uh, uh, Diego Sanchez, yeah. who showed us how you can use body shots and pressure to just drain a man of the oxygen in him. He had no energy. He had no energy. Mickey, Mickey Gall was energy. going for some haymakers yeah. after haymakers, no trying to get a quick knockout on the veteran and make a name out of him like he made a name out of himself when he dominated uh, that WWE wrestler. What was his name? CM Punk. CM Punk, yeah. yeah so I think he was trying to make a name out of Diego Sanchez, but that man who was from the original you talk about tough recently that you and your wife were watching mm -hmm. this guy was from the original tough That's and he's right. still out here they said that he hadn't finished an opponent in 11 years wow. and so this was well deserved yeah. uh, any different thoughts same thoughts no i thought diego fought a veteran fight against a guy with six fights it really looked like that to me it was yeah. like 30 fights to six fights and diego like I don't know where you go next with him. I don't know if you can give him a rank guy. He's won two in a row at welterweight. He's like Man. a career lightweight, I think. We can get to it, but I don't know. I think, I think uh, Robbie Lawler deserves a great sparring partner. I think those two veterans, I think that'd be a scrap. Uh, I don't want to go into that fight quite yet, but Robbie okay. probably deserves someone bigger after that performance. I can expect it. Um, another fight on the prelim card that we loved, and I think I called it the second before it started that it was going to be a first round KO within a minute. And that was Johnny Walker over uh, Misha Serkinov. I forgot that that was on the prelims. I thought it was on the main card. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're 100% right. It was really, 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 really dumb. And it shows you something that I think Rogan talks about a lot. It was dumb that he dislocated his shoulder by doing a worm <laughs> in celebration after the fight. One but I kind of fuck with it because he's funny as hell. Because you do so the weird. worm. This no, is how I used to do the worm. Man, this is like, I'm a witness. <laughs> you're good, too. You're talking about shit from But like, anyway... Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing Rogan always says is that the behavior that makes this man an exceptional fighter, the risk, the lack of risk averseness that made this man win three fights in four months in the UFC with all of the time racked up to under three minutes, which is less than one round in a normal yeah. match. That type of lack of risk averseness is the same behavior that would have him do the worm in celebration and injure himself. Probably. And so maybe fact, he wouldn't have it. I mean, you also have to chalk it up to him probably being a heavyweight fighting at 205. He's huge. Yeah, how much did you say he weighed? He, he walks around close to 240. That, I yeah, don't, and I he's don't six understand. He's 6'6". Six, he's huge. I really Misha, don't understand. Misha's not a cut. small, light heavyweight. Misha's 6'3", you know, and yeah. he's barely making 205 himself, but he looked small. And he's Johnny, probably the deadliest know? that Johnny Walker's face yet as a submission specialist. BJJ guy, black belt, yeah. for sure. But yeah. I know you're a big believer in the the kind of, the metrics, right? The height, the weight you discussed, in addition to the technique of that flying knee. Yeah, he's got good Muay Thai. Man. He's a striker, he's got good Muay Thai, and that's it. And he's not a classic guy who tactically breaks you down. He He just throws wild movements at you that you cannot expect. He, he fought the fight, the fight that Anthony Smith should have fought tonight. I don't know. We'll get to that later, but he should have came at it in that kind hey, of Hey, maybe you'll get him versus Anthony Smith next. We'll see. Oh, that would be fun. I don't think he would give him that high of an opponent yet, but I like your matchmaking already. It's possible. Idea, yeah. um, let's move on quickly to the, meet? Yeah, the prelim Or was there anything besides that? No, the prelim headliner was yeah. Zabit and Jeremy, which I said was going to be him versus Kyle Bochniak 2.0. because. Yeah. Stevens does everything Bastiat could do, yeah. but maybe even better. But and we still might not have seen the full arsenal of the Gung Fu wrestler. Gung Fu. I think you audibly screamed when he did that off the cage <laughs> kick. Yo. It was like better than the Showtime kick of Anthony Pettis. Yo, one of my favorite basketball players of all time is Tony Allen. I once was live at a game with the Grizzlies versus the Clippers. That's a where deep cut. Tony Allen, this, best favorite this. basketball player. He Tony kicked Allen. a man who is more than six foot tall. Chris Paul in the face and he said he did it on accident. I bring that little tidbit up to say that this man is a beat that you're talking about. He didn't jump off the cage at like yay tall or yay tall. It was, three to five it was the it, top of the cage. It looked like he hit the cage at like six feet or seven feet <laughs> and then came off with a swing and a miss. But 
I, I appreciate the theatrics. The man wants fight of the night. The man's trying to get that bag. Yeah, and I, I don't know if people from Dagestan are known for being supremely athletic, but maybe it was a pretty <laughs> athletic move. Hey, um, when you're that slim at six foot one, seventy four. Yeah. Reach, but weighing in at 145 on, on weigh-in days. And this is one of the fights on the card that I actually picked, you know, incorrectly. And I'm, I'm kind of okay with it because Zabit's great. He's great to watch. But I thought Stevens was going to KO him. Because yeah. Zabit really comes in kind of careless with his technique sometimes. Like, he, he could get hit. You know, sometimes his hands are down. Yes. And he's doing wild shit. And he could get hit if Jeremy had to get inside. You know, Zabit's a lot bigger than him. He had to get inside and get one hit. Just didn't work what out. What do you think about, uh, you know, Jeremy Stevens? Tagging him up in the third round versus the beats kind of wrestling control in the second Yeah, I think that's exactly what you said. I think Zabit won the second round with with ground control and Jeremy Stevens was lighting him up in the third round and then Zabit basically played it safe to finish off the fight It was like the last like minute and he was just like I need to secure this fight I'm gonna go for his leg. I'm gonna hold him there. I'm gonna stall and I don't turn it up a little in the last 15 oh, seconds really? I want to like say a last, last scrap it almost looked like they were gonna have to your analogy, a Bachmiak moment, you know, yeah, where they're just like, let's just leave just it right here, laugh and yeah, beat each yeah. other in the face when they blood seem is like everywhere. They fucking didn't like each other though. I don't know if it stems yeah. from that. Yeah, like, you talking about the dirtiness? Yeah, after the set, first round or something, there was yeah. like pushing and shoving after. After the bell yeah, rung, yeah, after the rest, called a stop to it. They thought I thought they were very jovial and they were laughing in the I think it was in the a media day. Yeah, and then they seemed like they hate each other. I don't know what happened in between. Yeah, it, you know it's hard. Shit talking is hard when you don't speak each other's language. <laughs> there was a lot of non-verbals going on, <laughs> and uh, I think they was getting a little too close to each other at some points. You know, they're also maybe cultural sensitivity difference. Is maybe Probably. maybe Jeremy thought that um, Zabit crossed the line at some point. I'm not entirely sure. Right? I still find it ridiculous that Zabit fights at 145 when he, as tall as you are, at six foot one. Yeah, I think I think that's crazy, crazy. And I think eventually, I think he'll be a 155er. Yeah, and like you said, I would love a fight with him and Khabib one day. But he has his, his fellow Dagestanis, Khabib and Islam, at 155 right now, who are, who are high up in the ranks. So that, that might fans. cause some tension, right? Maybe. We'll see. They might fight each other for this yeah. Who would you like to see them boys fight next at 145? At 145. Uh, I think Zabit, an interesting fight with him would be, I think he wants Volkanovski or Aldo. But Aldo is probably going to get Ortega, I think, at 237. Mm. Um, then they're probably negotiating that one. I would not like that. I'd like a tune-up fight for Ortega. Yeah, it's Ortega, Ortega, Ortega going Ortega into the fire. Man. Right yeah. after Max Holloway going right into but, the fire. Hey, but, the best should fight the best. Yeah, I think, but I don't, I don't agree with Zabit going for those two guys. Like, why would you yeah. kill the prospect, Mokanovsky, or you know, get killed in the process? Or yeah. I think a better fight would be going back to that Yair fight because he wanted Yair really badly. Mm -hmm. Yair got Korean Zombie and went through that war and got that crazy elbow finish. Yeah, that was the knockout of the century. Yeah, wow, century. <laughs> year. I'll give you a year. Of it. Bro, yeah. that was the invisible elbow. I don't no, know where I that would, came from. I would love that fight, Zombie versus uh, Zabit. Would be an awesome fight. I still want that. Nice. What about you? Um, I would agree. I'd agree with all those, man. All those, honestly. Um, one forty-five does seem to be like it's going to be in a log jam, though, because the champ like, is about to move up right. and fight. That's important. I don't know and if that's, that's a permanent move either. Up. I don't know if that's permanent well, or if he's just going. Yeah, to if he over. wins, I don't know. If he's still good at weight cutting, he could defend both belts. You know, that'd Maybe. be a savage move. Maybe. But DC's it, defended both belts. There's like too much, like, and they're fans of each other. He's called DC out, <laughs> <laughs> and jokingly. But I think um, Zabit won't fight Edgar. So like, what are you gonna do with Frankie Edgar in that way? Maybe you could do Edgar versus Volkanovski. That'd be like two wrestlers going at it, and that'd be like a number one contender fight too. I would love that. Anyway, we still haven't gotten to the main card. We've been Let's talking about it. prelims for. Let's do it, man. I don't know how long. Uh, first fight, uh, the one Joe Rusucha missed. That's in, right. Like, that's uh, right. Uh, Kempo yeah. Black Belt American wrestler. <laughs> my not, old roommate. Let's call him out so he joins the podcast. <laughs> uh, Our first observer, live audience for this great and established podcast, White Belt I, MMA. I'm pretty sure he fell asleep out there. I didn't even see him move. No, I think he's taking notes. But <laughs> he's gonna have some bloopers for us and for the fans. Uh, but yeah, that first fight was uh, Cody and uh, Pedro, and it ended very quickly. It was the yeah. first rounder. Um, and Cody did the same shit he did in the last two fights. He didn't learn one thing from the TJ fight. He went in crazy and got rocked and that was it. This fight reminded me of the latest Aaron Pico fight. And what it reminded me of was also Cody's fight against TJ Dillashaw, really both his fights against TJ Dillashaw. And that is 
if you have skills in Muay Thai or in kickboxing, there is a tactical way to go against someone. Even when you have that tactical way, you could still lose off of, you know, a critical hit that lands. But there's also a way of throwing all your techniques out the window and just allowing it to be 50-50. What we saw was Cody and Pedro, Pedro who's known for guillotines and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, knocking each other out. They had knockdowns on, on both guys, but at least on this guy, Pedro had a better chin. Yeah. But I don't know how long that chin's gonna last. That's why I'm biased not to grappling just for the sake of being biased to grappling, but because it is the lowest risk longevity way to, de beat, to defeat people over time. And this way, is, it's not good for longevity. It's not good for anti-aging, which is what uh, Diego Sanchez says he's going to get into after MMA. Bizarre. It's interesting. Bizarre. Bizarre. Sure. I'd love to know what the hell that means. And I want to hey. hop on that bandwagon. Diego's, bro, hire me. Yeah. Hire me, bro. Send a DM about the anti-aging. Yeah. Okay, Let it go down in the DM. Um, but yeah, I think that I would say Cody has a little bit more technique and a little bit more defense than Aaron Pico. I don't know if you could put him exactly. In you the mean same in these situations or overall? Or? Overall, I mean, I, I've watched quite a bit of his fights before yeah. this pay per view, and I think you can't quite say that's exactly the same situation, but I understand yeah. your point about the lack of defense. It was a fun fight, though. The last minute was a scrap, enjoyable. The rest of the card didn't have uh, any other finish. No, I'm sorry. Ben Askren did get a submission. We'll get to that. Uh, did you not want to talk about uh, your girl, Waylay? Oh, Twice? man, Waylay Zhang. I hope she's a strawweight champ this year. I, I'm telling you, man. She's 18 wins in a row now? 19, actually. 19 she's 19 and 1. She lost her first match and has won 19 straight. She did look shaky, though. I mean, Tisha did a good job. She looked shaky at times, but I think overall pretty dominant. And I yeah. want to see her against tougher people. I mean, she won by decision, but the decision that she won was, it's one of the greatest decisions that you can win. It's the ref pulling you off while delivering elbows from like half guard or side, yeah. side control. It's like yeah. a weird half guard side control. It might have been a quarter guard and then side control. A little bit of her leg was covered while she was in side control. Just delivering and raining and pouring, hailing she's elbows so, on she's her. She's so violent enemy. for a straw weight. I love like, it. Like yeah. for uh, you don't see straw weights being that violent. I mean, Andrade. One hundred fifteen pounds for those yeah. who don't know what straw weight means. Andrade is pretty pretty violent, and she's fighting Rose in Brazil. But not many of them are like that. I can't I can't see like Karate Hottie uh, Michelle Watterson fighting like that. You know, it's pretty violent. Hey, sometimes your opponent brings it out of you. So maybe if they scrap, it'll be like that. I, I can't wait to see who they match her up with. Um, but let's get to I think what we thought was our main event. Is that safe to say? Definitely, definitely. And we event. touched this a little bit, but let's touch it some more. And that was Ben Askren and Robbie Lawler. Uh, I could like do Woo! a whole podcast on that Woo! for four minutes <laughs> that happened there. And I thought, you know what? I feel so bad for Robbie. I feel so bad for Robbie. You know, I'm happy Ben won and Ben like probably deserved it at the end. I don't he know. did all the right things. Yeah, I mean, he didn't do anything all. wrong. He, didn't he did do anything more wrong. than all the right things. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. He survived. He showed a lot of grit. Robbie had him rocked. Like, and if you looked at the end of the fight, if you looked at their faces, Ben is bleeding, like tired. How did he rock him? How did he rock him? Dude, he angle slammed him. It looked like he angle slammed him. <laughs> he had him flying in the air. Yeah, before he, that, how about the strikes? The blood? No, that wasn't before. Oh, was that after? No. Ben goes in for the takedown. Oh, that's right, from top control. And, and I'm basically Robbie stalling, and yeah. then he lifts an Olympian in the air, throws him almost on his neck. It was quite yeah. dangerous. We weren't and sure if he was going to toss him out the cage. And ground and pound that was vicious. It Jeez. looked like it was going to finish him. And you know what? Yeah. Herb could have stopped it for that versus... I don't want to single that man out. He's a great ref if you saw how he let... And we'll get to it, but the, the, I've the seen, light heavyweight fat fight, he let that go a little long, which yeah. I appreciate in terms of the cage wrestling, unlike we'll get to uh, what Goddard was up to. But he, uh, yeah, man, I'm just gonna, I gotta appreciate that, the way no, he said it. You know, and he was like, I felt bad because he, he finished the fight. It looked like for me, I've seen quicker finishes. Another person would have called the fight for Robbie Ruthless Lawler when he was on top, wailing on Ben. Yeah. But if you know Ben, being 18 and 0, being this great prospect They let it go the because UFC, of that. They didn't want him to go But he was him. also lifting and fighting. He was still crawling. He was crawling, he looked rock, but he was making moves towards, and he did eventually flip the situation. I've seen fights stopped for, for less. Oh, yeah, I think you're riding right, right? <laughs> That's all right, we keep going, baby. Yeah, um, but let, let's say... How Talk about how it finished, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Ben showed real determination to get it done and get it a bulldog choke, not even jujitsu. 
like just using absolute like bully tactics. Just putting him in the bulldog. Gym, well, Ben is not, is not a jujitsu person. He criticizes jujitsu all the time. Uh, my own, my own hair. teacher, Crone, he, he, he commented on Crone's victory by saying that social media was so happy by seeing one Gracie Jiu Jitsu expert, whereas when you see multiple champions of Olympic caliber wrestling going up there, when you see DC at that light heavyweight and heavyweight, when you see the Australian champion Robert Whitaker at 185, when you see Cejudo at 125 and then just beating the 135 champ when he came down to him, when the 135 champ has also got a collegiate wrestling background. So Ben has had some critical things to say. The difference so, there is that Ben trained in the Blue Dungeon with Dana Hammer before, and he's done quite yeah, a few sessions. Yeah, over, but know? he wasn't doing a lot of dangerous submissions. You didn't see him going for a heel right. hook or anything but like that. But the point was this. He did that, that uh, what do you call it, the schoolyard bulldog or right. bully choke. Not under the chin. The, no. The choke wasn't like putting the, taking the air out of Robbie. It was stress on his jaw yeah, slash the mouth, mouth area. Yeah. And... And maybe the eye a little bit. Maybe, but then, yeah. I mean, I know he didn't respond right away to Herb and- Well, first his arm dropped. His arm was up and it dropped to the floor. In right. response to that, Herb Dean came and asked him, and like you said, he didn't respond. He didn't respond, but, but they could have had his mouth covered. You know, you know maybe true. he didn't respond. I don't know. I personally believe he was unconscious for at least one or two seconds. He popped and then right Herb, back up. Herb, Herb, well, before he popped up, yeah. Herb Dean grabbed his hand. And when he grabbed his hand and tried to lift it, at that point, I believe that Lawler came back to consciousness. Maybe. And even after Herb told Ben to get off, Ben kept holding it a little bit. Because that. Ben was surprised. Ben yeah. didn't think that was a tapping situation. Yeah. I think Ben was just holding on. Let me get this round done. Let's go to round two. I'll wrestle him again in round two. Yeah. We don't know. But still, interesting fight. Um, I think with Ben, I don't know where you go next with him. I don't know. Maybe uh, since Kamara, I'm probably going to fight Colby. I don't know who you get. Maybe Darren Till would be interesting. To see well, if Darren Till beats Masvidal. Correct. The winner of that versus Askren, I believe, would be a great fight for the number one contender versus the winner of Usman versus Colby, which is, in my opinion, set in stone right now because Colby and him have been talking shit for a long time. And Usman says that he deserves to give a whooping to Colby. So he, Usman, the champ really wants to fight him. So I think, and Colby really wants the real belt. You know, yeah. he's been carrying around this interim title that he went and presented to uh, MAGA leader Donald Trump. The disruptor. <laughs> uh, uh, and he's still carrying it around with his megaphone, talking mad smack to people yeah. who are actually I think, fighting. I, I think the Camaro uh, colby fight is a good transition to um, Usman versus Woodley. And what did you think of that fight, to be honest? Like, I don't know. Like, I was... Mm -hmm. The least interested in that fight of the, the fight. You fight. mean after or before? Uh, before even. I oh, so. I was looking forward to it because they have very similar styles. What is interesting? I just don't love Usman's technique. I don't know. I like. I it. loved it. I loved it. We, we, Africa, we Africa, <laughs> Africa. Look, I actually was rooting for Tyron to win because I'm also a fan of Aspen and that style. But I always love the best man winning, and I cannot be mad when another African wins. This might be the year of Africa with him. And with Israel Adesanya at 185 in the UFC, with the heavyweights, uh, we have Anthony Joshua, who is a, a child of Nigerians, whereas Israel and Kumaru are both from Nigeria, what about actually. Francis Ngannou? Francis Ngannou, Cameroonian. There are a lot of people out there. Czech Congo is, is calling out Ryan Bader in Bellator heavyweights. There's right. another African right. for you. Although I thought he lost but his fight to me. Which, I think the most interesting thing, and this came out in a Luke Thomas interview with Kumaru Usman that I was watching earlier this week in prep mm -hmm. for this fight, is that Usman was a Division II wrestler. Tyron Woodley... Champion. Division II champion. Champion. Tyron Woodley is a Division I wrestler in college. They knew of each other. They knew about each other. And Kumaro was describing all the D1 athletes as people who are overall generally good and better than D2 athletes, but that they have this prep school kid attitude where they're too cocky, too haughty, too arrogant, too insolent. And he said that he was an anomalous D2 person. He said there are anomalies in D2 wrestling and D3 wrestling who either for academics or other reason or financial, whatever reason, couldn't make it to D1 but still had the requisite skill. Here he showed 100% total domination through wrestling the entire time. Was there it, were was a couple of attempts. What, what was dominant in his wrestling? He shoulder popped him. 
He get maybe 200 liver strikes to the body. He took him down like no one has ever. I think they said the statistic was that Tyron had only been taken down once before. He has some of the best takedown D. Kumaru took him down with ease several times. No, I think the takedowns were legit. I think he did a lot of stalling, posted takedowns. And yes, I mean, he got the job done. Tyron was completely immobilized. You could say that. He completely immobilized Tyron. Yeah. And to me, was that the most interesting fight of the card? No. But... Kamaru got it done. Give mad respect to him for getting it done. So let's get to the championship, the other championship title match. John Jones, potential GOAT, but does have dark clouds Big surrounding Astrid. him. Big yeah. Astrid makes the potential GOAT. Versus Anthony the Lionheart Smith. Yeah. I, I what do you think? I think John Jones probably should have lost that fight by disqualification. And I don't know what the oh my Anthony God. Smith is thinking oh my God. to not take the pay per view points. Think about it this way Anthony Smith is champion, right? You know what that match brings up? That brings up a rematch against John Jones. Tell him what the illegal strikes were, though. Uh, that, we'll get to that. But what yeah. I'm saying, okay, Anthony Smith, let's say he wins by disqualification. Uh huh. They rebook a fight, rematch. He's the champion. You think so? Of immediate. course, immediate, because John oh, Jones is wow. the goat. And then guess what? He gets the pay per view points of being the champion. He gets a million yeah. dollars. But he just decided to use the Lionheart. Well, this he is the anything. classic debate about ethics that are based on principles versus ethics based off of pragmatism. Realism versus idealism, uh, kind of these Kantian ethics that are imperative for I'm all times, so all situations. That's what it is. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> He's a Kantian. You know what I'm saying? I think that's really... Anthony Smith really may have never read Immanuel Kant, but he is living Kantian hey, philosophy don't, don't out. Don't out. Don't out. I'm saying may. I don't know. I don't know the case, but he showed that he is more interested in the principle of the matter and wants to win in his eyes fairly, even though the rules would dictate that he could have legitimately won. Yeah. He wouldn't have felt good. It would have felt like a consolation prize to him had sure. he beaten John Jones. Sure, but I think you... So he's not just about the, the bag. Some people would take people interested in just the bag and just the money and just the theatrics, yes. But today we learn Anthony Smith is a fighter. He is a fighter's fighter. And you, the same thing. Interesting. I just two wish he was a better fighter. <laughs> the, but listen, the two championship match were, ser were seriously the same in this way. Tyron Woodley and Anthony Smith, all they tried to do was survive. And yeah. the other side, in Kamaru's case, the challenger. In John Jones' case, the champion defending. I said... Showed total domination I said and total the entire offense. Fight, the entire fight, I think I, you heard me. And I was saying, he's going about this all wrong. Anthony yes. Smith. He is allowing John Jones to be John Jones and pick him apart. He admitted that after the fight, too. He did. And the thing is, I was yelling at him to go forward, yeah. to make it crazy, to yeah. make Jones have to deal with, like, crazy hooks coming uh, out of nowhere. And what he you might... want is Johnny Walker. Sure, exactly. But at is... least in style. And yes, he might get taken down. Yes, he's respecting yeah. John Jones' or not wrestling. Out. And he and he's taking it easy, but there's no way you're going to win like that. You're going to win on some crazy shit. That's yeah. the only way it was going to go down. <laughs> so I don't know what you do with them next. I don't know who John Jones is going to fight next. Maybe he'll fight a heavyweight. Maybe he'll fight Brock Lesnar. Maybe no. he'll fight DC. The way he was talking in that, that commentary with Joe Rogan seems like he don't want none of that smoke who are you from give Daniel Cormier That's a, that's a big pay-per-view. Who's a big pay-per-view? Tiago Santos? That's not a big pay-per-view. He's not interested in big pay-per-views. He's instant. He's interested in being the most dominant person at light heavyweight of all time. He just wants to get 10, 20 more wins in a row at light heavyweight. Okay. So and then after Thiago that, Santos. maybe. Probably Tiago Santos. Santos. What's more interesting was what, what they do with Anthony Smith. Are they gonna, who, do you, who do you want for Anthony Smith? I think you mentioned it while they were fighting. I'd like to see him fight Gustafsson next. That That'd would be a cool fight. That would be, be a cool, cool fight. fight. Yeah. I think you believe who will win? Gustafsson. I think Gustafsson has By. to win. Uh, he's gonna wrestle. He's gonna put him on the ground and he's gonna wrestle him and then he's gonna ground him out. Gustafsson is the only person to have ever taken down John Jones. Fact check me if I'm wrong on that, but I don't even think DC has, who is another Olympic wrestler we we're talking about. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. But Anthony Smith has similar kind of build, and I know you're, again, interested in the metrics of uh, people. Yeah, it could be. But I think that um, overall, I was pretty satisfied with that card. It lived up to the card of the year so far as it has been called and look forward to more violence in our future I, I i like what robin black always says when he says enjoy the hostilities these were hostilities i enjoyed i hope you enjoyed them next time i do want to touch a little bit on the combat jujitsu fight night that happened some disappointments oh about yes how it please next time we'll that. cover way more stuff and more. i want to talk about the philosophy of fight format 
you know, kind of this balance between entertainment and, and sport. And of course, having Joe or Stisha on the on the pod next one time. One day, if he blesses us with his presence, yeah, that would be beautiful. Yeah. But the the kind of fight philosophy I want to talk about is that I have seen, and I, I wrote it on my little boogie board earlier, the right, little right, scribbling the, thing. That old, that old new tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the blackboard that you could doodle on. But anyway, there are a number of fighters who have won decision fights. I don't believe in decisions. We'll get to that later. But a number of people who have won decision fights and have crazy things happen to him. Mirko Krokop won a decision fight against big country Roy Nelson, gets a stroke, retires. Robert Whitaker wins two decision matches against Yoel Romero, 10 total rounds with a monster, also an Olympian from 2008, from that same time period, but representing Cuba instead of America, and gets a hernia and collapsed bowels. We have the Irish dragon getting kicked and getting a punk at winning a decision but eventually having a, a kick deal later damage that punctures a lung i think the list could go on and on and on and we'll discuss the merits of that i think unless you have any any thoughts you want to share right now quickly but i i, I think that if you get some sort of lasting damage to you there should be some decisions overturned if decisions exist at all. Well, I think the, you can't really consider Whitaker in there because I feel that happened in training rather than in the OL fight. Possible. It was probably more, the time frame makes more sense. But um, it certainly didn't help. I don't think you should take away wins from fighters just because they got hurt afterwards. I think that's a little ridiculous, but we can debate that on a further show. Um, it's been a pleasure.